it's the new show Bishop Garage check out our merchandise www.bishop-garage.com Welcome to Bishop Garage. In this episode, we will visit Matt Harris of 40 Cal Customs. And let me tell you, Matt is one of the best custom bike builders in the US. And then we're going to follow on from there with a special report on the Panamericana race with Rene Brinkerhoff of Valkyrie Racing with three Porsche 356s participating in sun, in torrential rain and an occasional fallen down tree. And last but not least, the Zombie Chopper Run, a mad custom run through the south of Spain. No rules and no assistant, only for zombies. So check it out, only on Bishop Garage. We'll shop out in my backyard in my house here. So it's just a little 36 by 24 metal building and uh, full of old tools from around the world, and different industries and, and machines and, and hand tools and torches and welders and just the basics that the bare necessities to, to build bikes. My shop, like I said, is full of old machines and old tools um, from around the world. Uh, machines that have done service in all kinds of different industrial trades. You know, take like, for example, my lathe. Um, it comes from Davenport Locomotive Works in Iowa and it was a big plant that built industrial train engines and also lathes and so this big giant behemoth of a lathe we drug it out of this old warehouse that was a, a big heavy equipment place and man to use like that old lathe or like this mill over here is a samp mill from italy from 1957 and, and you know just like old torches and old old machines and when you make this part on these old machines you know, sometimes you think like, man, this machine was in some factory somewhere. This was some guy's job. Every day it was to stand here and run this machine. What did that guy make on this machine? You know, what did he do? What was he like? What kind of person was he? You know, what kind of stories could these machines tell? working on cars, hot rods, race cars, that sort of deal. We always went to the drag races. And so I've always been around go fast stuff. I've always been around fabrication. My dad's been a welder and fabricator since before I was born. So the two have always kind of mixed for me. Man, I got into motorcycles a long time ago when I was about 17 years old. My old man brought home this old junked out Ironhead Sportster with busted cases and uh, told me if I wanted to go ride bikes with him and I had to fix the bike and put it together. So. I did, we, we fixed the cases, put our bike back together and, and started riding it and I hated that bike. I <laughs> pushed it more than I ever rode it because it, it stayed broke down, but I, I don't know, something about that bike and, and getting to ride it and, and when I did get to ride it, but, but working on it and I just really enjoyed messing with motorcycles and have been ever since then. Earlier this year, we went to Born Free show, and uh, we were involved in a hot bike speed and style fabrication showdown powered by Harley Davidson. So they picked six builders across the country for a Harley to give an engine and transmission to, and then build a bike and debut it at Born Free. And we were fortunate enough to be one of the six chosen builders, and Harley sent us a 120R race engine with a six-speed transmission, and said, "Here it is." be in Cali in June. You know, the bike we built is, is obviously going to be different for Born Free because it's a twin cam. It's a new Harley engine and, and those, those aren't very plentiful at Born Free. So obviously we have this modern power plant, but we built this really vintage style bike. It looks like an old race bike. We took things from different periods of racing history from Harley Davidson, from drag racing to land speed racing to time trials, whatever. Uh, cafe bikes and we put it all together so it still kind of fit well with Born Free because it's a vintage style bike and I think a lot of guys there 
kind of opened their eyes to, hey, this is a brand new power plant. This is a new transmission. And these guys are building some pretty cool stuff with it. You know, maybe, maybe we don't always have to have pans or knuckles, although they're nice, but you know, maybe it's, maybe it's still cool to use a, a modern power plant. Later today, we're going to go ride some scramblers over the Smoky Mountain Harley Davidson, and those guys are a really cool dealership, man. It's 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 unlike any other dealership that you've ever been to, and these guys have been working really hard to try to revive the the scrambler spirit from like the '60s and '70s, whenever they were really a hot item. So these guys are taking late model sporties and turning them into scramblers, and I've been fortunate enough to do some of those for them. The first one I did was uh, a 1970. For Ironhead Sports, year. so I got stuck with the old iron. But I built this really cool scrambler that looks like it could have went into a Harley dealership in the late 70s, early 80s, and bought it. It looks like it was a factory type bike, and that's what they're doing. The bikes that they build are really high quality and function really well, and they look like a bike that should be on the showroom floor. And we'll take them out in the Smoky Mountains. I mean, you're not going to find a better place to go ride a scrambler than in the Smoky Mountains. You know, in these bikes, I think you'll be impressed with how well they perform. Riding motorcycles is, is completely different than, than anything else you do with your friends. You know, you can ride bikes and, and be in a group of guys and still feel like you're alone. Uh, you you kind of have this, this uh, sense of camaraderie around your friends or other guys that are on bikes. And, and so it, it's kind of crazy because you can feel like you're alone, but at the same time have friends that you've never met. I've only been full time in my shop here for like a few weeks now. I've always had a full time job. It was basically like having two full time jobs. A 50 hour a week regular job and then 40 hours here in the shop. I was only 40 because I had to, had to sleep and see the family sometime, you know? And so, no, I, I'm very fortunate to have some big projects coming up. And that's opened the door for us to do this full time. I'm the full time guy here. My buddies still come over and help out. Uh, my buddy Chase and my friend Carp and, and my dad Ed comes over and, and we all work on stuff together. And it's, it's really a cool deal, man. And I'm very thankful, very blessed to have the opportunity to be able to do this. It's, it's like, man, when you, when you get to do something that you're, you're passionate about and something that you really love and really want to do, it's like you're not working. Whenever I made a decision to, to start working in my shop full time, a lot of guys asked, you know, well, where are you going to be a couple years from now, two, three, four years from now, whatever. You know, man, I don't have this best laid out plan. I don't have it. It just seemed like the thing that I'm supposed to be doing, man. It, it was a tough decision. A lot of thought, prayer, aggravation went into making that decision. And, you know, I don't know. I, I don't have a certain answer. All I know is I want to make a solid living and provide for my family in the motorcycle industry in some aspect. You know, do I have like this grand scheme of this huge shop with all these employees? No. You know, are we going to do what we're doing now? Yeah, building custom bikes and making quality parts. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Race this year and all finished but one. A lot of people run type fours in this class, sport menor. 
and I wanted to give my guys the edge. You can't exceed the, the displacement of the motor, but you can make that motor run as good as you can. In my, I think in my rush to make ultimate power, I built a motor that was more suited to uh, drag racing than endurance racing. It wasn't a stroll in the park for any of the teams. In car number 153, two engines, a couple spin outs, a crash, and a close encounter of the cow kind. The team from Germany never stopped. In fact, on day seven, they wanted to keep going. The seventh day, and this day the car is perfect. The first day is perfect. <laughs> so. We could go on, we could go on. Well. We would love to go on, continue. Plague, every car problem imaginable from day one. Hector in car number 166 fought to stay in the race. On the last day, with a broken belt and then a dead alternator, he still didn't quit. His determination to cross the final arc showed the true spirit of Law Carrera Panamera economy. Generator not, not, doesn't charge anymore. So we have to stop in a, in a store to buy a cable and a battery to finish. Now on to our top three finishers. Even though their engine quit on the last day of the race, Oscar and his brother took third place in their first La Carrera Panamera economy. An amazing accomplishment by any standard, but all the more so given Oscar drives with a prosthetic arm. Both brothers having been bitten by the La Carrera bug will be back next year. I'm coming back. Yeah. Bigger engine. Bigger engine. Bigger, yes. Better brakes. Uh, better years. transmission. And now for first and second place. Car number 155 and car number 151 in Sport Monroe class were neck and neck the whole race. JJ looked like he'd be out of the race before it even started after a crash on the qualifying round. But his team was able to repair the car and he jumped in the race with gusto. Carlos started the race on day one, but lost time on day three due to submission with his gears. This put JJ and Carlos just seconds apart for first and second. But on day six, JJ pushed a bit too aggressively and went off the road, costing him his lead, which now put him minutes behind Carlo. Going into day seven, it appeared Carlo was the clear winner. But this is the La Carrera Pan American and the last day can make or break any team. After the second uh, speed stage, going into one of the, the bridges, he told me to slow down because there was a dip and a hump. And I just took it too fast. And uh, something in the end that we went. And so we couldn't do anything else. So the day was a write off. Unfortunately for Carlo, his mishap cost him first place, and he returned home second in class. Well, it was difficult for us. Because on the first day, on warm up, we had an accident. Fortunately, we, we were able to fix the car. And we were able to start and did really well. The car was great, we drove well. Well now, we are here, and that's the best. Well, it was worth it. JJ, in his 1954-356, took first place in the 2016 La Carrera Panamericana Sport Menor class. On behalf of myself and Valkyrie Racing, we congratulate all these teams for an amazing run. We look forward to seeing them next year when we'll be back to joining the hunt for first place in the world's last great road race. Viva the La Carrera Panamericana.
truc là. Le zombie, c'est pour tous les âges, mais c'est pas pour les lâches. Donc n'envoyez pas de mails haricots, des mères, tous les branleurs, les jeunes branchés. Laissez tomber, ok sur un shop, de toute manière, c'est un acte subversif et c'est la liberté. Il faut penser qu'à ça. Et dans le monde merdique aujourd'hui, c'est important d'être ça. Parce qu'il n'y a pas d'assistance, il n'y a pas de meuf. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go back to New Orleans. You know it hurts me so. Baby, I'm way down here. You know I'm way down here Babe, I'm way down here In a rolling fog, baby, please don't go Le run le plus sauvage d'Europe. Il ne faut pas avoir peur de lui, c'est bien mec, il la star. Et on est venu ici pour les conditions difficiles, climatiques, pour le Joe. Voilà, t'es fait de ça, tu roules à 50 degrés, le putain de Mexique.
que c'est des bons gars et je me suis bien marré. On voit des choses qu'on qu n'aura jamais, qu jamais l'occasion de vivre chez nous. Well, there you go. Another fantastic episode from Bishop Garage. Don't forget to tune in next time. Don't forget what we say. When in doubt, throttle it out. This is Bishop Garage. It's the new show, Bishop Garage. Check out our merchandise, www.bishop-garage.com.